Okay, over here, we got one over here. American Eagle, you have to wait like 10 minutes to get a dressing room. And you have to get like three employees before someone will open them up for you. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I think the point is, is as a few examples we've had from Forever 21, we've all kind of been in that situation of being very irritable and aggravated, especially during Black Friday season or something like that, of the customer service being less than uh, up to par of what we would uh, consider ideal customer service. And obviously the corporation, um, their code of conduct and what they expect from their employees uh, oftentimes is not um, what is delivered in the organization. And some of us have actually... You know, uh, resemble this young lady here uh, and her frustration. So I'm going to turn it over um, here to, and we're going to have another interactive. Alright, so we're going to do a, a little uh, activity here. I'm going to pick a couple people out. If you just come stand up here at the front, we're going to do a, a slight interaction. Dory, Brittany, Leah, Alex, and Yes. Carrie, 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 Carrie. We're horrible on names today. We apologize for that. Alright, so as you know, our uh, project today, our presentation is on secret shopping. So just at looking at this lineup, we have what we like to call a police lineup here for you. So these are our suspects of secret shoppers. And what I'm going to get them to do is everyone turn to your right. Alright, back to the front. Turn to your left. Back to the front. And one by one we'll start with Alex. Step up and all you're going to say is, I'm a secret shopper and step back. I am a secret shopper and step back. <laughs> I'm a secret shopper. I'm a secret shopper. I'm a secret shopper. I'm a secret shopper. <laughs> Alright, so out of this, who is our secret shopper? Who can tell me who our secret shopper is? Nobody knows who the secret shopper is. You can't just sit here and look at these people. If all these people walked into your store, there's no way to tell who your secret shopper is. So in this experiment, Brittany is actually our secret shopper. So because no one can tell when a secret shopper walks into the store, we have no idea who it is. You guys can sit down. So in doing this, this gives us the, the extra credibility of every person that walks into our store is important. Uh, for our store, we did Gap, and Amy's going to talk to us about the Don, the man that started it all. Okay, so Donald and Doris Fisher founded Gap in 1969 in California. The reason behind this was Don could not find a pair of jeans that fit him the way he wanted jeans to fit him. He went to many stores and couldn't find it. And so in 1969, he opened up the first Gap store with the idea of having the highest quality jeans, and ever since then, Gap has been known for its excellence in high quality jeans and standards. Now, Derek is going to talk to you all and give you all a closer look about Gap. Yeah, so from the beginning, in 1969, uh, we are now, as a Gap Corporation, a leading global specialty retailer that specializes in clothing, accessories, and personal care products for both men, women, uh, and children, uh, and babies as well. Uh, we also we employ 132,000 employees and about 3,000 company operated stores. Uh, and 200 franchise stores that are felt all over the world. Give me that employee figure again. Uh, 132,000 employees uh, with 3,000 company operated stores with 200 franchise stores around the world. So it's a global uh, impact that Grab is now making across um, the world. Additionally, every week 100,000 employees welcome more than 14 million customers to our store around the world. Thousands more contribute behind the scenes. So the relevance of this is that uh, this is definitely not some small undertaking, that there are tons and tons of, of customers entering into these stores and with employees that are held to these expectations like we discussed earlier. Uh, where your passion is, uh, is a, a very uh, common motto around the Gap organization. If you're familiar with that, they, they claim that. So the clothing is more than just clothing, it is art, it's a way of life. So you're supposed to wear your uh, passion. Gap, as a corporation, is committed to providing their many customers with excellent service, products, and experience. That is something that they want to be known for, the reputation. And their code of conduct very succinctly is how we do business is just as important as what we do. So as a corporation, their goal is to not only sell products, but it's the way by which they sell them is very important to them. So that kind of introdu introduces us to the problem at hand that Kelsey's going to walk us through. All right, I'm going to talk about the introduction and the objective of our report and our presentation. So going off of what Derek just said about GAP, 
um, having so many employees and so many customers. Um, Gap has a strong reputation for being a quality clothing retailer, um, also being um, such a strong, solid name. And so what the problem is, is the, the um, employees are actually having, the managers are actually having a problem measuring employee progress because it takes all the employees working together to maintain Gap's name. Um, and we're going to talk about our primary and secondary research and then also our purpose of the report and presentation, which is to encourage GAP to implement a secret shopper policy. Um, so, like I said, GAP does have a, a high reputation for being a quality clothing retailer, and the expectations are aligned out for the employees in the GAP handbook. This is to think customers first, to always put your customers first. Secondly, to inspire creativity, um, whether that's what you're wearing or how you're acting. Thirdly, to do what's right, um, to be a uh, employee of high character, to deliver results. Um, and then, so CAP, GAP is currently tracking the progress of their employees through an annual review progress. And basically what this does is allows the managers and the employees to sit down and have a conversation about where the employee is um, as far as these four things are. Could you walk us through that process, Kelsey, um, the, the, the uh, performance evaluation process? Yes. Um, the manager will tell the employee when their scheduled review is, and that's once a year, so the employee knows, and they sit down, and the purpose of the um, review is to establish goals, to review over the, um, their performances, to clarify what the expectations of them are, and then also further outline the different job requirements that they have. Yeah, in addition to the, uh, the employee ratings, there also is a way by which GAD is currently um, scaling customer service. Um, but as you see here, as our slides convey, the only current way of measuring employees' customer service is via an online survey. The way this is, is carried out is after you make a purchase at GAP, you have a receipt that you can get 20% off if you fill out an online survey for, for customer service. Uh, however, uh, upon interviewing some GAP uh, managers from the Johnson City store alone, uh, only an average of 15 surveys are completed a month out of uh, many, many transactions. And this equates to roughly 5% or less, as a quote from the manager there. 5% or less of what? Of the total uh, interactions of the store of purchases, of transactions, 5% actually go online and fill out the survey. So they do have a, a method by which in, in place now to scale customer service, but it's clearly it's not effective really uh, it's not conducive to their entire populace of the store. So I'll head it back over to Kelsey. Continue. Okay, so our problem question became how can we change the current system for tracking employee progress to strengthen employee morale, customer service, and employee performance? And so first of all we conducted primary research. We did three interviews. We did an interview with a Hollister employee because they currently have a secret shopper program. We also interviewed a GAP manager, um, and then we also interviewed a secret shopper. And uh, the Hollister employee told a story of how a secret shopper came in and actually rated their store poorly. And the managers kind of got all the employees together and they talked about it. And this really allowed the employees to understand more of what their job requirements were and what their uh, customer service expectations were. And after that poor evaluation, Hollister's employees actually began to um, better act the way they were expected. Um, the GAP manager told how she thought it would really be a high or a, it would be really be a asset to GAP if they did implement a secret shopper program because it would allow um, the employees to always be on their game because they would never know who's a secret shopper and they would always be acting as if the customer was a secret shopper. And then the secret shopper um, actually told how they have to go into the store and they have to know a little bit about the store before they actually shop there. They have to know what they're going to buy and how to buy it um, and also what the expectations of the employees of that store are and they evaluate them um, based on those expectations. Um, the secondary research um, we use the GAP employee handbook. Uh, we also use the GAP code of business, which just talks about how they do business with um, GAP stores across uh, the nation. We also use a secret shopper company website, and this has a uh, list of different secret shopper companies that you can contact um, to hire a 
Secret Shopper program with your store. And then we also use the Mystery Shoppers Providers Association website, which is just another source of Secret Shoppers where you can get a list. And this website actually said that um, it was their uh, goal and their mission was mystery shopping helps determine whether customers actual experiences are as intended because most customers um, will not co will not complain if they have a negative experience but will not come back to the store and so that's why it's important that secret shoppers give that evaluation to the store because most customers won't complain they just won't come back and so you don't know if a customer has had a bad experience I'm going to talk about uh, customer satisfaction uh, we tell, you've often heard the old adage, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And so a lot of times people will take that, and what do you do with an old dog if you can't teach it new tricks? Do you get a new one? What do you do? Well, as we've defined here, it costs approximately six times more uh, the amount of money to hire someone new and teach them and instill in them the policies that you want, rather than just trying to refine your old customers. And what we notice with GAPS policy is that there's really no evaluation system to uh, be able to talk to your employee and tell them, hey, this is areas that you need to improve on, and this is ways that you can change your outlook on the store so that customer satisfaction is maintained. So in that, Kelsey talked about dissatisfied com uh, customers, and for every customer who complains, there's about 50 people who don't say a word about their experience. And in that, if I don't say anything about my experience at a clothing store or at a store in general, I may not go back at all just because of uh, dissatisfaction that I've received from employees there. You're five to seven times more likely to talk about a bad experience than you are a good experience. So it takes you multiple, multiple good experiences before you outweigh one negative experience that you've had at CAD. Now Kylie's going to talk to us and continue on with the policy change. Okay, so I'm going to talk about ideal policy change. This consists of a third party or a thing called secret shopper who would go into the store and shop and then afterwards he would review, he would write a review and it would be on their experience and of the, uh, of the actual employees. Uh, throughout this, you can actually have, use, them, use them multiple times and this would be for to see trends over time and if there's a problem, they can go and they can go back and they can um, resolve them. Short-term changes here, the policy change efficiency is going to be pretty quick um, due to the fact that there's not really a whole lot that needs to be done throughout the employees. It's more or less an upper management type thing. Once they get the contract with the secret shopper, uh, the results will be pretty quick as to when secret shoppers actually come in. So really the only uh, change uh, that's going to happen is the fact that management is going to need to talk with their employees about this new uh, schedule change and talk to them about the fact that secret shoppers uh, and mystery shoppers will be utilized in the store. Uh, so not much is going to be required as an employee standpoint. More or less, it's just going to be information that's passed along. Uh, and management is going to basically talk to them about what they need to do, uh, greetings and things like that, and what they need to be saying to uh, these uh, customers that come in. Um, the employees under our proposal would be rewarded. Uh, right now they have a gap rewards program for their employees where they earn points for certain things that they do. But this is a way to uh, actually monitor that and give these gap employees more rewards which they in turn can use for in-store credit and to buy things in their store. Uh, they will also get feedback on their performance from uh, the evaluations that Kyla talked about. Uh, when they send those evaluations back into the store, the management will be able to look at that, see what sales associate actually talked to that customer and then be able to talk with that customer about areas of improvement and also good things that they did. So some long-term changes would, um, I'll, I'll, would actually be in, uh, increasing opportunities for the employees. Um, this means that they, not knowing that they're a secret shopper in there, they will try to be motivated more to work on their weaknesses and grow as an employee. Uh, as the performance enhances, um, this is where the managers will see that they are making changes and this is where like the reward system would come in. Um, that will not only create better relationships with customers, but it will make better quality with the employees in general and then they will reflect on to the customers. Um, after seeing this progress in the gap, like using this for just in their store, they can also use this for the competitors or rivals. They can actually send um, a secret shopper into their rival stores and see their prices and their styles and kind of keep up with um, the competition. 
with that, it will affect the uh, economic sales of the store. You can't uh, really put a control on what the economy is going to do across the nation, but you can help out your own store. And in doing this, as we talked earlier, negative remarks get talked about a lot more than positive remarks. And so if you can eliminate those negative remarks and not even have to put positive remarks with that, your sales are going to increase because your customer satisfaction is going to be better and people aren't going to be sitting there uh, pulling down your corporation because of a negative experience that they've had. Uh, there's going to be a higher morale just between employees. A lot of times you don't think about it, but when you're doing better as a store, when you're getting more perks, when you're earning rewards throughout the store, your morale is better. You want to come to work because you want to be able to earn those rewards and, and get store credit so that you can get things for yourself. Um, but there's also the uh, discipline benchmarks here uh, that you can talk with your employees. You don't have to worry about, you know, we don't really have a, a basis to, to fire you, but now with this evaluation process, you can start to talk to your employees about what they can do better. And if it's consistently a thing that they have not worked on and you've continued to talk with them, then you have the legal implications to be able to say, listen, we've talked to you about this multiple times. Uh, it's just not working out, and so therefore we're going to have to part ways. Remind me, Craig, about how often employees get reviewed? How often is the performance at the, review? At this uh, point in time, it's once a year. Once a year? Yes. So with this proposal change, it would be multiple times due to the amount of secret shopping that's done at the store, which is set by uh, management in the store. All right, so by implementing this policy, the employees will have to do nothing. They will change nothing. Their training will be the same because this is also just a review on how they are working. So then if there are problems, they will go and they'll fix them later. Um, there are final exp financial ex expenses, which is limitation. I couldn't find the exact numbers, but for to implement as a whole corporation, but they have like, um, like they would get ten dollars an hour kind of thing. That's like the lowest you can get just for the individual secret shopper. Can you get? There's so many organizations that, you, that have secret shoppers. Like, or you could, you could hire an organization that has secret shoppers, and they're all um, prices are different when uh, paying them. So what I all I found was that ten dollars an hour is the, the lowest. I'm going to discuss the alternatives. So the first one is less employee drive. The employees are less likely to give effort to the customers by greeting them and things like for customer satisfaction. And the second one is lack of work ethic, meaning because there's no evaluation system, the employees are less likely to work hard on the job. The next one is fewer incentives, and that is employees would be less likely to earn benefits because there would be no reward system at all. And last, clothing sales decreasing. Because um, if the employees aren't working hard at what they're doing, probably less customers are going to be coming to the store, which is causing the clothing to decrease, the sales to decrease. And I'm going to pass it on to Amy for policy limitations. One of the policy limitations for implementing a secret shopper policy would be inaccurate evaluations. There would be potential for bias because the secret shopper's mood might affect the outcome of the evaluation results. Um, as well as their poor effort, this will hinder their ability to accurately evaluate the store. Now Katie is going to discuss some disadvantages. So some of the cons are inaccurate results. Secret shoppers, they may not be putting full forth effort to make the Gap store better, as long as prolonged results. And the last one is employees aware of a secret shopper. If they're acting suspicious or something, the employees might be like, hey, that's a secret shopper. I don't understand. What do you mean by prolonged results? I get inaccurate results. What from did you mean? Shoppers. Yeah, from the secret shopper. Prolonged results. Please follow through with that. As far as how it goes with like a secret shopper that would come in to evaluate a customer or a, an employee and then go back, there's no timetable for them. To yeah, actually it could get take. So the who knows how the results? Like it could take months to get back. Okay. Okay. So a, res a delay in results delay. and re okay. Yes. Okay. Some of the advantages of this are incentives for employees. There would be more rewards for employees who would excel at their customer service. Um, with a secret shopper policy, the customer service would improve and it would um, retain and attract new customers to the store. Also, with the secret shopper evaluation results, um, this would give store feedback of areas they can improve on in order to ensure top quality customer service. So in conclusion, what we discussed is how implementing a secret shopper policy will in fact aid GAP in their achieving their high code of conduct. So they have high expectations, their reputation is very crucial to them. 
So implementing this is a, another means by which the GAP can, can do that. And the way that, that we'll do that is by the following. To create, uh, by creating a rubric to scale employee performance, as we've discussed, providing incentives for stellar service and conduct, uh, as well as increase uh, the employee <coughs> morale, of wanting to come to work because of the increased incentives, uh, as well as increasing customer service and satisfaction, uh, and in turn, because of the increased customer service and satisfaction, uh, you will also see an increase in sales as well. So with that being said, thank you for your time, and do you have any questions for us? And give them a round of applause, folks, and then we'll launch into questions. Okay, talk to them. I have a question. When you talk to the managers at the Gap, did they um, ever say anything like why they don't have severe shoppers now? Maybe that was Amy. Uh, no, they didn't. They just haven't ended ever a secret shop. They just used their annual review as their way right now. Did they like how you thought yes. they it? They really yeah, I, 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 I think with Jory here, go ahead. I was just saying, they just don't necessarily know if it could be implemented. Going through corporate and everything. Uh, right, right, right. Right. Because they have like surveys they do, mm -hmm. and like, what did you say, only like 5% yeah, like fill out, so it's really not even accurate. 15 out of you know, mm -hmm. several hundred transactions they have throughout the month actually are in scale through that. But it would have to be a corporate, we talk with Johnson City individuals, we didn't talk corporate wide, it would be the only pushback that we got. And probably if that yeah, would be all gap stores that have to get right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so that would there is a feasibility issue. Yeah, yeah. And this is something that you, you would have to really beef up a, a lot of you is showing that there is a problem because if you're asking people to invest, you have to show that there is a problem with morale that would be directly benefited by this program or with sales. Have they had a decrease in sales across a five-year period that you can yeah okay but you see you have to be able to show that folks or they're not gonna you're asking them to invest in a program and more importantly you're asking them to change and and then have to implement that and that's person that involves personnel matters that people the, do not like change I think our main attack on, on the current system is the fact that there's really no evaluation process so that, yeah, was, that was compelling that was our, our main argument was that not only just for the fact that it would increase sales and increase morale, but you have a better way to actually evaluate your employees and actually get a better turnaround so that employees are doing a better job. But did you see how you implied an argument or implied a problem? You know, they may a manager may go, well, it's working for us. So what data are you going and going, well, actually, it's not. You think it's working for you, but let me talk to you about Hollister. And once they, they uh, instituted this program, what happened? So, talk to them. What do you see? Well, what do you want? What do you? What do you? What poke holes? They've got to work on. Everybody in here has to work. Um, have you set? Or did you guys talk about setting limitations for the secret shoppers, such as um, specific styles that they would have to purchase, or is it? Were you guys talking about more of someone who kind of walks into the store, walks around, interacts, and then leaves? Yeah, yeah more. More of like someone who just comes in and interacts and. Maybe, maybe buy something, but maybe Probably just buy something because yeah. then it would seem real. I know a lot of uh, secret shopper uh, incentive programs that people that actually work for uh, corporations actually get a, a stipend of some sort to actually go in to purchase something. And so when they go in to purchase, it's not uh, necessarily set in stone what they have to purchase. It's just to make a purchase and to make contact with an employee. And ideally, you would work in tandem with the gap managers of the store. So what are they really looking to assess on this quarter? So if it is, you know, friendliness or sales, whatever that may be, you could work in tandem with the super shopper corporation that can they could go in to that end. And there's also a way you can do it as to uh, a gap uh, management member can actually contact whoever they have their contract through to say, you know, hey, Derek's been working with us for three months. Uh, we really kind of want to see where he's at. Can you come in during this time, send someone in so that we can evaluate Derek and find that associate. So it's one of those where if you uh, may think you have a problem or if you have a lot of complaints about a certain person, then it gives you that evidence, like we talked about, the legal uh, impact of it to be able to say, hey, listen, we've had a lot of people talk about you, but now we have it written down. The benefit is they may or may not be exhibiting that 
uh, behavior from the managers. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, from a customer's perspective, they get more of the unbiased view of is it really or really not a problematic issue. Okay, Do you have that any was... research on like resentment it would build with the employees? Yeah, I think this is an yeah. excellent question because you said increased morale. I do think I think uh, I think Alex is on something. We didn't actually look at that aspect of it just because when we talked about it when we were implementing it, we all thought it would be a good idea just because of our backgrounds and our jobs that we had. Uh, it's one of those things where you're supposed to be doing it anyway. So what's the difference whether you're evaluated or not? But I agree with him. I think like you need to. Minimum wage job, yeah. and, you okay. know, we like for the you. most part, it's like I don't care about the rule. You know, when I have minimum wage that. jobs. It's like, I'm not looking to do what the company wants. I'm looking to clock in, clock out, and do as little work as possible. I think it goes back to I mean, <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Kelsey. Back to the Hollister interview, uh, because that's, that's technically a, a lower, I mean, a minimum wage job. And, I mean, they weren't acting as they should, and then that secret shopper came in and evaluated the store poorly. And so that kind of... Um, encourage the employees to kind of pick up and act as if, act the way that they were supposed to act and the way that they were expected to act. I get the so, motivation. I was just like wondering how, how much they resented. Right, and that, that makes sense. No, and I agree that this is, this is a hole that you guys would have to fill as you're walking forward and putting this before a client. Yeah, and, and to that end, to that point of our increased employee morale, I mean, that is a, definitely a factor in that. I think the only stipulation of that would be if a secret shopper is in a bad mood that day and gives an ill-advised review that goes directly against the employee. It may not even be an accurate reading, so there is that, that, that issue. Yeah. I thought that a secret shopper would be in a bad mood, but not, when you go to Hollister and you go to Gap, I go to Gap, it's more intimate shopping. You go to Hollister, the music blaring, like everybody's in like flip-flops, so how would you, how do, how do they rank these secret shoppers in to give a good performance to a like, more intimate Gap store? Because when you go to Hollister, I mean, you know, it's just a lot more, it's just really quick paced shopping. I feel like more than Gap, you're going to take your time, you're going to get sized on certain things. So are these secret shoppers like trained to go into a Gap store and rate on that kind of performance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Through the managerial staff, they, they, they give their expectations of what they want. Yeah, and each so store has different expectations. Leslie, did you? Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. I was just going off what he what. Um, Alex said, because I was going to say, giving rewards, I know that um, where I work, when you get a good, when you get like a good review, you get rewards. So I think that that would, would go against, you know, Alex is saying. yeah, if you do bad, yeah. I mean, you lose hours, but when, when we do good as a store, we celebrate, we go out, we do something. I worked so. at Abercrombie Kids um, in high school, and we actually were like the top store, and yeah, so we had our Abercrombie downstairs, and they're like the older store, but they're like the best one. And we would win this Christmas bonus every year where our our managers yeah, would get like a two thousand dollar bonus and we would get um, just a pay raise for like that month or something. And when so, you're a good store, like you're proud like that you beat the other stores around you like in your region, you're like, We're the best one. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a really Yeah. I think yeah. that the rewards is what you should would be more focused on. Yeah, exactly. yeah, like gives rewards right now for And what like Kaz changes. said, I know that with I've worked at a couple different retail stores, like I worked at Dennis, I worked here, and I worked here. And all of them all of the research shoppers have different um or the secret shoppers have different like did they say this to you? Did you do this? Did you do this? So I think you just have to tailor it to like what the gap experience is because and because they have like a form that they fill out. So I don't think that, that would be a big issue. Would your incentives be um I know probably be on a scale of like one to a hundred and would your incentive, like, for someone to get an incentive, would they have to make a solid 100? Or would it have to be above a 90? Or how did you guys... It really depends on, like, how they set that up for the, like, reviewing. So it's, like, your, it's your store's discretion to, like, to pick out from it. And Amy can talk about uh, the current reward system based yeah, on, then, on that. Yeah, we, I mean, we get rewards for getting gap cards. We get, they're called gap points. We online and buy like that it's not just gaps of anything and we get them for getting x amount of gap cards or just for excelling at customer service sometimes in store if the managers see that you're doing a good job and it's just based off of their discretion okay because i was just wondering because i at sonic when i go back for for son or for the summer um you only get an incentive if you make a solid 115 and that's you're wearing skates you're the one who takes out the smile tray you're doing all this this and this 
and I think in my five years that I've worked there, I've only seen four or five people actually get that I incentive. Think I think it's like a result of what we would try to implement. It would be more or less like a passing failing type thing. If you, if you don't pass on whatever the rubric is set up by the store, uh, you wouldn't get an incentive. Mm -hmm. But if you did pass, then it would be a number system as to, you know, if you got within this range, you get this. But I want you to think out, if you are ever, and you will be, I promise you, presenting to your boss, you have to know your solution better than he or she, and if, and if he or she is asking questions like this, you haven't, thought it, you haven't thought it through, because this is one of the main problems, is that this idea that of moving incentives, is that you, you threw up incentives, and, but really didn't kind of talk through about how that program would work with incentives, so I want you to know, I want you to know that thoroughly. I okay. feel like it would be more of like a corporate thing, because like where I worked for, it was more of all the stores. So it was your store in general. So I feel like with the secret shoppers, that would be the, the better way to scale everything. For like it would be your whole store gets a uh, reward. But then I think it, the managers would have taken place like their own personal secret shoppers. In this case, we couldn't really figure out if they could, if our John City store could implement a secret shopper without their permission. Yeah, so that's what like you have to figure they out. Would have to, if they could do that, then that, that's when they would do individual ones within their store to, to their employees. But at this point, it's really only through the corporation, which would be stores are going to be judged, like the whole store. And to your point, I think if someone is achieving a perfect score on this scale that we're measuring by, I think that they should get a little bit more of an incentive and a reward than someone that may pass but didn't quite get a perfect score. Can I have a, a hierarchy of... Of, of reward uh, that would have to be determined on the, on the corporate level. Yeah. Gap gets so many points, the points they give to their employees a month, and if they implemented the secret chopper policy, it would have to, they would decide what, how many points they would give to that and how many points they would give to their employees probably. One thing I do want to compliment this group on um, is that whenever I ask a question of one, I want you to notice how everybody kind of jumped in. You didn't have just one person answering the question. You must always be prepared for that client who's going to be aggressive and who's going to interrupt, and you didn't lose your rhythm, and you didn't make one person stand forward and say, you know, everybody stop, look, and make Derek do all the answering. So I did like that, and I did want to give a nod to that. Let me clarify, the only people who are filling out surveys are the people who have bought. So, so walkouts, no, no attempt at tracking. Exactly. So they have that experience in purchasing things. Really, there's really no way of scaling. Absolutely. And I thought you, I thought you made, you brought in some reasonable uh, arguments and support. Uh, that's that's very problematic. That was interesting to me. Okay, we need to get on to the next uh, group. Thank you very much.